is um, six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I am a big advocate of getting people out on time. So my name is Alicia Lane. Um, I want to welcome everyone to this evening's informational meeting for our Urban Renewal Plan in Neighborhood Conservation Combining District. Um, a very long term, but very important. I am with the Housing and Planning Department and I am our Community Engagement Specialist. Um, and again, this meeting will be recorded. Um, I believe we quickly stated that, but just that our attendees know, it will be recorded and placed on our Speak of Austin page. Um, so we can go to the next slide to show the agenda. So everyone, again, welcome. Um, this evening, our meeting starts at 6 and we'll be going until about 7.30 p.m. Um, we're going to go over some quick logistics and housekeeping to help the meeting run smoothly, as well as speaker introductions. We will have a presentation this evening um, about the planning area some questions and answers at the end, and then a little bit of information on next steps. So some quick um, housekeeping um, things to note. Again, this meeting is being recorded and placed on our Speak Up Austin page. Right now, you will see that the mics and cameras for our panelists are enabled only and our attendees, your uh, mics are off and cameras are off. Really, this is just to make sure that we have good streaming quality. I'm sure we've all been in Zoom meetings where we break all the things. So we're just making sure that we have good sound quality and good streaming quality. That way you all have a really robust um, and clean recording after this meeting. You will see a Q&A widget most likely at the bottom of your screen if you entered our meeting via your laptop or smartphone. Please use this Q&A function to put in your questions. Now we do have staff going through the chat function in case you drop your question there, um, but we really are hoping that you'll help us by consolidating all of your questions into this Q&A widget. Um, if you're having audio issues when you registered for this meeting, um, you were emailed um, a link and a telephone number, and I encourage you to use that telephone number to call in if you are having audio issues. If you're still continuing to have audio issues, feel free to put it in the chat um, and staff can help you as well. Uh, so these are just a few um, housekeeping rules. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I think for us as staff, we are very committed to making sure that this is a respectful, collaborative, and safe environment for all of our attendees. And so some of our rules um, really are about respecting one another, um, asking clarifying questions if need be. We definitely want your, your input um, and your feedback, but we want to have an open mind to make sure we have a smooth and again, a respectful meeting. So this evening we do have four speakers. Uh, we have Mandy DeMaio, who is our community development administrator for our uh, department. We also have Manuel Escobar, who is the Urban Renewal Board Chair. We have Laura Keating, who is a senior planning in housing and planning, and also Mark Walters, who is a principal planner in housing and planning. So first for our speaker introductions, um, I'm going to invite Mandy to give a welcome. Thank you so much, Alicia. And um, as Alicia mentioned, my name is Mandy DeMeo. I'm the Community Development Administrator for the Housing and Planning Department, and we're thrilled that you all are here um, to spend a little bit of your evening with us to talk about the Urban Renewal Plan in the neighborhood NCCDs, Neighborhood Conservation Combining Districts, um, this informational meeting. So thank you for taking the time to be here. We do really appreciate it. The goal of tonight's meeting is to learn about some recommendations that were proposed by the Urban Renewal or are being proposed by the Urban Renewal Board. Um, and these are proposed changes to the Urban Renewal Plan and the East 11th Street and East 
12th Street NCCDs or Neighborhood Conserv Conserv Conservation Districts. My gosh. Okay, um, and so you may know that the, the tonight's meeting comes on the heels of um, the Urban Renewal Board's recommended changes, uh, which occurred on February 8th. The board really went to great lengths um, to ensure that the plan and the NCCDs um, are in alignment. As Alicia mentioned, during Q&A at the bottom of your screen, in addition to the chat function, which you may be more familiar with, there is a Q&A function. Um, and we ask that you put your clarifying questions and any questions uh, for staff um, into the, the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. We want you to feel prepared for the upcoming Planning Commission, Commission meeting as well as the City Council meeting. Um, where these recommendations will be considered for final approval. So again, thank you all so much for being here. We really appreciate your time and your insights and your feedback. Uh, and I will turn it back over to Alicia Lane with our department. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, so now we'll have a welcome from our chair, uh, Manuel. Thanks, Alicia. And thank you to everyone for attending this public meeting and to city staff for hosting and soliciting feedback in these times when it's difficult to meet in person. Uh, my name is Manuel Escobar and I'm honored to serve as the current chair of the Urban Renewal Board of the City of Austin. Two of my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Daniel Skidmore and Commissioner Koba Tate are also participating or hope to participate in this meeting. We're going to be listening carefully and we'll take the feedback and questions from this meeting back to the board for further consideration. The updated proposed versions of the urban renewal plan in the East 11th and 12th Street neighborhood conservation combining districts represent years worth of meetings and the combined efforts of the board and all of our commissioners, city staff and numerous advisors and of you and of all of the other stakeholders who provided us with valuable input along the way. The board was tasked with updating these documents to modernize and harmonize them so that they were easier to understand and so that it was clearer to property owners exactly what they are and are not permitted to pursue on their properties. While the intent was to try to preserve the general spirit of the restrictions present in the existing documents, the board also solicited and received input from the public at many of our meetings over the past two plus years, which was greatly appreciated. We may not have included directly all of the suggestions that we received, but we strive to conduct the process in a way that ensured that all stakeholders that had input about the documents had an opportunity to have their voices heard. I'd like to again publicly extend my gratitude to my fellow commissioners and to city staff and advisors and to all stakeholders who have participated and who continue to participate in these updates to the urban renewal plan and the NCCDs. These documents have been improved by your input and we look forward to getting further feedback from you as these documents to continue to progress through this process. Finally, while our work on these documents has mostly concluded, the urban renewal board is now turning to another core component of what city council has tasked us to accomplish which is the consideration of proposals for the sale and development of blocks 16 and 18 on East 11th Street. Over the next few months, the board is going to finalize development priorities, develop scoring criteria, and finalize a request for proposals. We will need your input on this process as much as it was needed in the development of these plan documents, and I hope you will continue to participate in those upcoming meetings and help us to deliver projects that will provide benefits to this community for generations to come. So thank you again, and I'll turn things back over to Alicia. Thank you, Chair Escobar. And I really want to um, really just echo his sentiments and Mandy's sentiments that we really are grateful um, and appreciative that you all have taken time in your evening to join us today. So we're actually going to jump right into our presentation. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so I'm gonna go over some of the background of planning and regulations in the area um, to start with. And so the urban renewal plan was adopted in 1990 um, and has been modified over time. Um, the urban renewal board of the agency, um, which Chair Escobar is the chair of, oversees implementation and compliance with the plan. and. The plan's vision, along with associated development regulations, intends to really create quality mixed use development along 11th and 12th Street. 
Um, the NCCDs um, are the zoning tools that implement the plan. Um, these were adopted at different times. And in the case of the East 12th Street NCCD, it is aligned with the regulations that are within the plan. But the East 11th Street NCCD is nearly 200 pages long and it includes in some cases different regulations for the same property um, than the plan. So that just creates confusion for what is allowed um, on a specific property within the area. So he, here you can see the boundaries of both the plan and the NCCDs. Um, they're mostly aligned, but on 11th Street, the NCCD does extend beyond the planning area um, along 11th, along I-35 and along Rosewood Avenue. So the goals of these changes, as, as the chair spoke about, is um, partly to streamline the plan and the NCCDs um, and make it really clear what's allowed on, prop on property owners, for those owners and for the neighbors as well. Um, the plan is also, the zoning has also always been intended to implement the plan's goals and visions. And the board recently added a vision to the proposed plan, which is to champion sustainable revitalization, reflecting diversity, achieving equity, and preserving East Austin's cultural history. So just to orient us to where we are in the process, after a multi-year effort, um, for the herb to develop these recommendations. The board made their official recommendations in January and February of this year at their meetings. Um, this is the informational public meeting ahead of planning commission, which will conduct their public hearing next Tuesday and consider. Um, we encourage you to participate in that meeting um, and to submit comments on the speak up page, which we will be passing along to planning commission and city council. Um, and then we expect city council to conduct their public hearing on May 20th and consider the amendments as well. So um, before we jump into the zoning changes, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of the changes to the actual plan. Um, there is an existing definition section, which largely talks about land uses in the plan. And so that's gonna be replaced with just a dedicated land use section. Um, all development standards, so height maximums, setbacks, those are moved into the NCCDs. So that can be found in one place. Um, in the future, the proposal is that any plan modifications will better align with the rezoning process. Um, and then some sections have been reorganized, outdated information has been removed and information about changes to the area since the original adoption has been added. So in terms of zoning changes, um, zoning standards uh, are comprised of two main parts. One is the development standards, which affect the size of the building um, or buildings. And then one is the land uses, which affect what types of activities are allowed on a property. So I'll go over the development standards and then I'll pass it on to my colleague, Mark, who will talk about the land uses. So as I was saying, development standards um, affect the maximum height. Um, They're also described through setbacks, which would regulate how close a building can be to a property line. Um, there's we have in our zoning code impervious cover limits, which limit how much of the site can be covered by buildings or pavement, such as parking lots. Um, and then we also use floor area ratio. Um, floor area ratio describes how big a building can be uh, in relationship to the site size. For example, if you have a 10,000 square foot site and a floor area ratio of one, the building can be 10,000 square feet. So a higher floor area ratio allows for a larger building. Um, I'm gonna describe the major changes to these development relation, 
development regulations throughout um, the next few slides. Um, we do encourage you, if you have a very property specific question, to follow us, follow up with us specifically, um, maybe after the meeting. But if you do have a property specific question, feel free to put it in the chat. And if we don't get it to it today, we will follow up with you after the meeting. Um, so looking at 11th Street, no, apologies, looking at 12th Street, um, the current development standards are based on subdistricts within the NCCD, um, or sometimes they refer to the base zoning of the property. The property um, are also subject to the project areas located within the plan, and so some properties have additional regulations. Next slide. Yeah. So on 12th Street, there's no proposed changes to the height maximums. Uh, this map shows that the height is based on which subdistrict um, each property is in. And so there's, there's higher heights allowed on the north side of 12th Street um, and, and about 35 feet on the south side of 12th Street, which allows for about three stories. Currently, um, any properties within the, pro the plans project areas do not have an FAR limit. Um, this means that doesn't mean that the building can be an unlimited size. It just means that the height and the setbacks are what control the size of new development. Um, and the areas outside those project areas, those properties are subject to their base zoning. So this creates some inconsistency between neighboring, neighboring properties. Um, as you can see, um, the areas in pink don't have an FAR and the areas in white would have to go to their base zoning within the land development code to figure out what their FAR was. So the proposed NCCD just removes FAR limitations from all the subdistricts. Um, which I think allows, adds a lot of clarity to what is allowed on the properties. Um, and then in terms of impervious cover and setbacks, there's no proposed changes on 12th Street. Transitioning over to 11th Street, um, subdistrict three, which is along 35 and outside the plan boundaries, um, remains primarily the same. Um, the NCCD, the proposed NCCD CD does recommend removing the FAR limits, but we don't anticipate um, this causing much change to the area, um, which was mostly recently developed. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna focus on the other three subdistricts. Like 12th Street, um, the plan also has project areas within, within its boundaries. And so most regulations in the NCCD are done by subdistrict, but anything in pink has additional standards within the plan. So the proposed zoning reorganizes subdistricts. Um, and so the new organization of subdistricts is around which street um, the district fronts on. So fronting on 11th Street will be subdistrict one, fronting on Juniper is subdistrict two, and subdistrict three is along Rosewood Avenue. Subdistrict four is along Rosewood Avenue. Um, and so, the board is proposing that subdistrict four will be subject to its base zoning standards. As you can see on this slide, within that subdistrict, there is a mix of commercial, office, single, and multifamily zoning. The FAR regulations on 11th Street um, can be found in both the plan and the zoning currently. And in many cases, it's different for a single property. Um, it's, the FAR is also complicated and can depend on the size of the property or the use of the property. 
Um, so the proposed regulations like on 12th Street remove FAR for subdistricts one, two, and three. And then subdistrict four, um, like I said earlier, will just refer to their base zoning standards. Height um, also has the same issue um, where the plan and the NCCD may say different things. Um, so the board uh, looked at the height for subdistrict one and two and really proposed limits that are based on adjacent properties. Um, so if we go to the next slide, this map um, shows the height limits that were applied. Uh, for subdistrict three, there's no change. Um, and then for subdistrict four along Rosewood, it's real, those heights reflect the base zoning districts. Impervious cover standards um, largely remain the same. Um, in subdistrict one, there was a different standard for new versus existing development. So there's a proposal to just have one, one standard for that district. And then within the current NCCD and the proposed NCCD, we just wanted to highlight that there's building design standards that promote a pedestrian friendly environment. Um, our land use regulations um, also do a lot to promote that goal. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mark and he can tell you about those. Thanks, Laura. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go briefly on a high level overview of the different uh, land uses in each of the different sub-districts. But first, <clears throat> many of the recommendations also had additional considerations given to them primarily creating a human skilled and walkable places, particularly along 11th and 12th Street. But as those two streets are really different types of streets, but 12th Street was going to be more of a, of a high street or market street with shopping, dining and entertainment options. Whereas East 12th Street would be more of a neighborhood skilled residential and commercial district. <clears throat> Other considerations that went into the land use uh, decisions uh, some uses are, are we, uh, the city cannot prohibit either because of uh, law, uh, federal law or legal precedent. And that would be a group home, uh, telecommunications tower or religious assembly. Uh, also uses were allowed based on city of Austin policy. Uh, so you might see something that says you can have a again, telecommunications tower or something that seems that that's not what you would want in a walkable mixed use district but we have policies and, and other considerations that we have to include some of those. So if you see uses like that, that's the reason why they were included. So uh, the proposal in the NCCD sets up three classes of uses and those are permitted, permitted with conditions and conditional. Permitted means you can do it with just, yes, you can do it without any special considerations. Permitted with conditions means the use is allowed, but there's a, a caveat to it. You can either, it may not be allowed on the ground floor or only allowed on the ground floor. And conditional uses as they are with, in the rest of the city would need to go to the planning commission to get a, a approval uh, for, to do that use. So again, East 12th Street, it's gonna be a smaller scale neighborhood mixed use district with office and shops and residential. Here's a, a Google street view looking to the west. And you can see that on one side of the street on the south side, there's a house. Whereas on the north side of the street, there is a, a small scale office building looking that's under construction. So that's the kind of the intent to that kind of small scale uh, uses that are compatible with, with those types of uses. For 11th Street, the uses get a little more complicated because uh, on 12th Street, it's just the same uses are allowed uh, on the entire street. But uh, unlike 11th Street, 12th Street, you, the uses are given, there's a universe of uses that are allowed, but you can only do those uses if it's allowed in your zoning. So if you have a, a zone that allows you to do multifamily, uh, you can do multifamily, but 
you can't do, let's say, theater because it's not allowed in a multifamily zone. So uh, 11th Street proposed districts, as Laura went over, there's, there's three of them, uh, along 11th, Juniper, on the east end, and then uh, on I-35. For Subdistrict 1, that's 11th Street, it's an actual, uh, one of the things that the uses are trying to promote are active commercial uses on the ground floor and less active uses on upper floors. You can see here, uh, whatever you might think of the architecture aside, the ground floor has, has glass windows that uh, people can window shop, walk by, look into the, to the, to the shops and see what's there. And on upper stories, there may be offices or uh, residential uses. On East 11th Street, it's, it's envisioned to be a mostly a residential uh, district with the uses are, are more residential uh, townhomes, apartments, and it acts as a transition between the more, the, the larger buildings on 11th Street and transition down to the buildings to the, to the north to, uh, to that. Also, the uses allowed there are small scale uh, commercial uses like medical offices and daycares. As uh, Laura went over earlier, uh, Subdistrict 3, the uses are going to remain unchanged from the previous ordinances. There has been a uh, Subdistrict 3 generally consisted of four different ordinances that were knitted together and uh, they're kind of treated a little separately because of the, the, basically those sites are primarily all built out. Uh, subject District 4 is a, is a mix of single family and small businesses, uh, includes a segment of Rosewood Avenue, a little bit of Navasota and St. Bernard Streets. Also, uh, for both 11th and 12th Street, there are some uses that are allowed because uh, there's an existing use or an existing business there, and the board felt they didn't want to try to push any of these longtime businesses out. So they made these carve out exceptions. For example, on East 12th Street, there's two longtime uh, funeral homes there. So funeral home services, uh, there's a, a club and a lodge at that address, and then a cocktail lounge in the 1800 block of East 12th. Again, looking over at 11th Street, the club or lodge, I think it's the Masons, and then a cocktail lounge at those addresses, as well as a, a lone single family house at, at that address. So there have been carved out exceptions where on East 11th Street, it's the only one where you could have a single family house. And much more detailed information can be found at the Speak Up Austin page that you see uh, this URL, and also as well as you leave comments there that you may not think of right now, but uh, later this evening, uh, you're thinking, well, I should have asked that question. Here's an opportunity to go back and circle back to speakupaustin.org forward slash URB dash NCCD and leave your comments there. Thank you, Laura and Mark for that great information. Um, so we're going to jump into our question answer portion of today's meeting. Um, I've seen some great questions come in. So as a reminder, um, staff is going through the chat to look for your questions. Um, we also ask that you drop them into the Q&A function. That helps us um, be able to see through the chat clearly and find your question, but also we can retain your question to make sure that they're kept for staff um, afterwards. Um, in addition, um, like I mentioned, if for some reason um, you are having audio issues um, and uh, you need to call in, when you, receive, when you signed up for the meeting, you should have received a telephone number. I only say that because even though you all are on mute, if there are some questions that we need some more information, we may take you off of mute, that way you can clarify your question. Additionally, if you called into the meeting and you have a question, you can actually raise your hand by pressing star nine. So again, if you called into the meeting and you have a question, and so you're unable to drop it into the Q&A widget, you can click star nine. Um, okay, so um, our colleague Esteban is going to go through your questions and read them aloud for our speakers. I will note that if a question was submitted that is very specific to a particular um, property or property owner, um, staff may elect to follow up with you offline 
And that's just to make sure that you get all the information that you need um, outside of this meeting setting. A good one-on-one -on -one session might be uh, what you need for your particular issue. Okay, so I will um, pass it over to Esteban. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, the first question that we have says, uh, it's from Rebecca Leonard, uh, and it says, were there any, were there any used, uh, uses removed from the permitted list on East 12th Street? So I guess, uh, yeah, I think some of the uses were changed uh, to reflect uh, the deliberations of the board. Off the top of my head, I, I don't know what those are exactly, but some were uh, taken out, though I don't remember, don't recall too, too many taken out. Again, <clears throat> some of the uses I think the board felt were not compatible to that uh, smaller neighborhood scale mixed use walkable district along 12th Street. And I can, uh, Rebecca can give me a, a phone call or an email and we can dig down a little deeper into that offline. I just off the top of my head, I, I just don't know which specifically ones were, were removed. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, the next question is from uh, Jess Moss. Um, on, the, on the foot chart, how many stories is 50 feet? And I believe that's around three stories, correct? Uh, three to four stories, depending on how tall your uh, floor to ceilings are in each one. So in, a, in an office building, modern office building, you might have 15 feet uh, floor to ceiling plates, uh, you know, with the drop ceiling with for lights and duct work and all that. But in a multifamily, you might be able to get four stories out of that. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, next question is from Elizabeth Alford. Uh, for East 12th Street, when the FAR restrictions are removed, will the FAR still be set by the base zoning? No. So yeah. So the proposal is that there will be no FAR restrictions on 12th Street, which is how it how most of the street operates today. Thanks, Laura. I um, also wanted to mention there is um, one of the downloads on the Speak Up page shows the difference of uses that are allowed today versus in the future. There's a table. Thanks, Laura, for the, for the reminder. Um, and yes, that speaker page uh, is still live and I believe it will still continue to, uh, to be live as well. Um, the next question is from Darcy Newfer. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, with the growth of Austin, these small scale solutions seem completely out of date. Why are we not making changes for more density? Why aren't we building more housing near the core and fulfilling compact and connected Imagine Austin goals? Well, uh, both, most of the, both 11th and 12th Street in the NCCD as well as the urban renewal plan boundaries uh, are within Imagine Austin uh, activity corridors. And I would posit that the recommendations for East, East 11th are very much in alignment with Imagine Austin with uh, 60 foot buildings on the, out on the north side of the, north side of the, uh, the street from around Navasota to Branch. Uh, again, with the different scale, it's, uh, it's just trying to be a little more, try to do a finer scale rather than just uh, allow really large buildings that, that aren't really in context to their surroundings. I don't know if that answered the question, but uh, the board took great time and consideration to kind of craft these recommendations based on the context as well as community input. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I hope that answered the question. Um, next question is from an anonymous uh, attendee. So one of our attendees. Uh, doesn't base zoning govern use on both 11th and 12th now, um, i.e. A, a use must be allowed by base zoning and also by the URP NCCD use charts on both streets? Actually, <clears throat> for the areas of the NCCDs covered by the urban renewal plan, in, in the urban renewal plan supersedes the uh, zoning, the NCCD, where there's a conflict. And that's what, due to Texas state law, which allows uh, urban renewal plans to 
basically establish their own development standards. Uh, but but if there is a if if the NCC if the urban renewal plan is silent on something, then the uh, municipal zoning regulations would govern that aspect of development. So uh, even under the current NCCD, the base zoning is really not is really doesn't govern what can be built. It's more uh, about what district you're in and what those what district regulations are. So uh, in District 1, you have one set of regulations. In District 2, you have another, and so forth. Thank you, Mark. And I, I think that's a good uh, transition to our next question from Tom, which is, uh, why is Rosewood allowed to build to 60 when homes on 11th Street are joined uh, to those lots? I can take this question. Um, so some of the proposal is, is based on what is currently allowed today. So it is true that on the south side of Rosewood Avenue, you can build to 60 feet, um, but on the north side, uh, based on the base zoning, those heights are, are gonna be less. Um, and then the areas on 11th Street um, reflect more or less the heights that are allowed by the plan today. Any other questions, Esteban? Or did we lose Esteban? I oh, apologize, I was, I was on mute there. Okay, what happened? Going and switching in and out on mute, interesting, sorry. Um, next question is from Tom. Uh, residential lots on Angelina are also um, adjacent to Rosewood lots allowing the 60 and why? Oh, I Ahead, I think Laura. I covered that in, in my last answer, but some of the 60 foot heights are based on current entitlements um, today. Um, and so we're not wanting to reduce the entitlements on those properties. Okay. Uh, next question is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, driving on the side streets between 11th and 12th uh, street is a, is a challenge due to parking on both sides of the street. Uh, does the zoning address possi the possibility of changing some of the streets into one-way streets? No, that's not really a function of zoning. That would be under the purview of the Austin Transportation Department. They would probably have to go out and do conduct some studies and do some analysis as to, to understand what the best solutions might be to manage on-street parking in the area. That's uh, outside of the scope of what we are doing with this process. Okay, thank you. Our uh, next question is from Richard Ferris. Are telephone poles blocking the entrance on 12th Street properties for construction purposes? They have to be lowered. I think that's more of a, a, a statement. Okay, I'm not sure how to respond to that, Laura. Do you? I think as part of the development, if, you were do, if your project required a site plan, and I think you'd have to, uh, whoever the person developing would have to work with, whoever that utility provider it is, whether it's Austin Energy or one of the telecommunications companies uh, to figure out how those uh, poles and attendant wires may or may not be relocated. Thank you, Mark. Um, uh, next question is from, uh, Anonymous attendee as well. Uh, does the zoning address uh, short-term uh, rentals, STRs, on East 12th Street? On East 11th, I mean, I can, that type two STRs are not allowed, which I really, I just, no, I just read that. I, I don't recall on East 11th, so on East 12th Street, that if it's allowed or not. Do you have that up, Laura? I'll pull it up real quick and we can circle back. Okay. Uh, next question is uh, from Megan Ellis. Uh, how could these changes be impacted by a future citywide LDC rewrite? 
so I can take this question. Um, the the changes within the NCCD are also being adopted by the Urban Renewal Plan. So as long as the plan exists, um, it supersedes any zoning regulations. Um, so as long as the plan exists, uh, these changes will will be um, will be the site of, will be controlling for the area as far as development. Okay, um, thanks, Laura. The next question is from Jay Perret. Uh, I believe I'm saying that correctly. Uh, what was the purpose behind the creation of Subdistrict Four within the 11th Street NCCD? By reverting to the base zoning, it seems that the se the section bordering Rosewood Avenue is effectively being removed from the NCCD for all intents and purposes. I don't honestly re we remember the process, uh, the, the discussions that, that went into that. Uh, it's, it's been a lengthy process. And I, I just, I don't recall those conversations. Uh, Chair Escobar, do you recall that? I do not. And uh, many of these changes were proposed by one of the city's consultants. And uh, I remember that being pretty early on in the process. So. It might have been something that happened sometime in 2019, but we can go back and, and look at that and provide Mr. Perry with an answer. Thank you. We, I will also say about that is we can look in the reasoning for that, but um, that does organize the sub-districts that are outside of the urban renewal plan area to be separate um, from the ones that are within the NCCD, the, the plan area. And I looked and it looks like short-term rental is not allowed on 12th Street. Type two or just all short-term rentals? It's not mentioned in the table, which means- 11th Street is specifically called out as type two. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for both of those. Um, next question we have is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, if we want East 12 to be walkable, why aren't, why aren't more uses being permitted so that people have a diversity of destinations close to where they live. Well, I mean, some uses are inherently promote a walkable environment, whereas others do not. Uh, a, a, uh, a drive through may not be promoting of a walkable use or a automobile sales uh, or a car wash or certain uses like that aren't necessarily conducive to creating a compatible uh, environment for pedestrians and cyclists. So the, the list of allowable uses was tailored with keeping that goal in mind and creating a more walkable uh, pedestrian oriented district. Thank you, Mark. Uh, next question is from a, a, an anonymous attendee. Um, if there are carved outs to preserve existing businesses that are part of existing culture, should there not be carve outs for changes in zoning to help preserve historic structures, to help preserve the character and history of the neighborhood? I'm not sure what specifically is referenced to the, I think the Victory Grill is, I assume that would be one. Uh, I know that on East 11th Street, there were carve outs specifically for certain offices to be allowed in historic structures as a way of, of preserving them. I mean, specifically, there's two I can think of. And I don't, I mean, one was used to be a, a, a bar, I do believe. And then there's the one that's in front of where our office building is. That's an architect's office. But the area being considered under this is relatively small area. I mean, it's 20 acres in both of the districts. There are about a little over 20 acres. Uh, so I think there, there was an attempt to create, to preserve some of those uses, uh, as well as if development were to come along that could possibly threaten those, there are other avenues to preserve historic structures. Thank you, Mark. 
Next question is from uh, Jay. Uh, in subdistrict one and two, heights tailor to be compatible with the adjacent properties outside of uh, the NCCD. Why not do this with the subdistrict four? 60 is significantly higher than the residential lots on the border of the adjacent properties on Angelina Street. Something we can definitely look into and think about, consider we have it. And we're now tonight, we're here just to collect information and to get uh, more input from the community. And that's what we're trying to do. And, and we'll take that under consideration uh, moving forward. And, we'll, and these will also like, so Alicia said early on, these questions tonight, and I guess our answers uh, will be included in the Planning Commission and City Council backup. Thank you, Jay. Uh, next question um, is from Tom. Uh, does base zoning standards apply to the, uh, to the properties on Rosewood that allow the 60 height restriction? Yes, so that, that 60 feet on Rosewood is based on the base zoning standards. Next question is from anonymous attendee. Uh, can you share again, please, in layman's terms, what the goal of this meeting is and what is being proposed? So the goal of this meeting is to make sure that um, people have more information about the proposed changes ahead of the planning commission meeting. Um, and the goal of the changes, I think the chair said it well, is to modernize and harmonize the urban new renewal plan with the zoning regulations. Okay, it looks like we've got, uh, we've got a couple of questions that are uh, in the chat um, that, I, that I'll read out as well. And so the most recent one looks like uh, from Darcy. Uh, how are neighborhood affordability concerns addressed in these changes? I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to put this out just kind of as a starting point for any conversation about zoning and affordability. In Texas, it's illegal to have to mandate affordable housing with the zoning. You can't have inclusionary zoning, is what it's called. And the Texas legislature saw fit to that several years ago that you can't do that. Uh, I don't know how else to, to say that but you can you can't help, uh, mandate affordable housing through zoning. Um, and I, I I believe it's one last question, which was actually the first question, but uh, I think you might have answered it. Um, that's from Darcy as well. Uh, why are the heights not all the same, and why is height higher on the north side? Um, I think we talked about that already. Well, Touch that again that on the north side uh, of 11th Street is now 60 feet. And then it steps down to 40 feet for those townhomes, at least, or, or any other future development along Juniper, then down to 35 to 32 feet on the north side of Juniper Street. So it's a, a step down to kind of create a transition between the, the Market Street on 11th Street and the adjacent residential uses to the north. Whereas on the south side, uh, the zoning was heights were picked to match up with what was uh, immediately due south of, of, of those specific locations. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we've got three more questions in the, in the Q&A. Uh, first one is from the anonymous attendee. Uh, 12th and Chincon um, has maintained some long running and unique bars for the neighborhood. Any growth here has been severely restricted. Is there any reason for that? Not sure I quite understand the question. Laura, do you have a? Yeah, I mean, can we clarify growth of, of what housing, additional restaurants? Um... I, I think there was a concern from the community that was transmitted to the board that they, there was a concern that they didn't want uh, a proliferation of bars in the, in, in the district either one, East 11th or 12th, but acknowledging that like on East 12th Street, there was the 1800 block it had a long time, or several long time uh, establishments there. So they wanted to preserve those. 
but we could maybe call the person up and ask for a clarifying question. Yeah, it looks like they, they added um, the growth I believe they're referring to is no cocktail bars or bars in general. I think I expressed the rationale by that is they just were concerned of having a lot of bars and rest, a lot of bars popping up in their neighborhood. Okay, um, we've got one question uh, left and it's from Jay. Uh, were billboards considered in the land use standards? And billboards, I mean, they're governed by another section of the code, the sign code, and that was not considered as part of this process. Thanks, Mark. Um, it looks like those are all the questions that were in the Q&A um, and in the chat. Thank you, Esteban. Um, so we do have some time left. Um, so I am going to ask um, uh, if there are some last questions, um, if you can please put them in the Q&A box. Um, I will say that I, I just saw a question pop up. Um, it looks like it's from Elizabeth. Is there any plan to bury the many unsightly power and telecommunication lines on East 12th Street? I am not aware of any plans to do that. I know sometimes uh, a development as part of their negotiations with the reviewers in the city of Austin will bury or move uh, power lines, but I'm not aware of any specific plans to do so. Okay. So I have not seen other um, questions pop up. Um, I'm going to move on to next steps. However, um, we will keep an eye out to see if any questions do um, uh, pop up as we're going up, as we're going through the next steps. Okay, um, so we can go ahead and hop to the next steps. Thank you. Okay, um, so I see the words are a little smushed. I, I apologize, it looks like it moved a little. Um, but as we mentioned, we do have a Speak Up Austin page. It is open now until April 26th. Um, so really, like I mentioned, this meeting, the purpose is to um, inform you all, give you a chance to ask clarifying questions. That way you can be empowered and prepared for the upcoming meetings where action may be taken. On the Speak of Austin page, you can learn more about these recommendations. You can pull down documents um, that summarize these proposed changes and learn a lot more about next steps. You also can fill out a survey where you can ask questions and provide feedback as well. The great thing about the Speak Up Austin page, like our speakers mentioned, is that all of your comments and questions will be downloaded and included in the report. So that's a really great opportunity to um, make sure that we have your questions and comments in writing. Additionally, questions from today, like we mentioned, will be recorded as well. There will be a planning commission meeting on April 27th, so coming up soon. Um, where the planning commission may take action on these recommendations. During that time, as um, members of the public community, you can also give your comments and um, concerns or feedback to the planning commission directly. Additionally, there will be a city, city, excuse me, city council meeting on May 20th, where again, action um, approving these recommendations will be considered. That's another great opportunity to give your comments and your feedback directly to city council. And then after that, um, the board has begun discussing property disposition for the Urban Renewal Agency owned property at 290 um, and 1100 East 11th Street. Um, there will be a public engagement plan. Um, it is in development. And um, this will be a main item at an upcoming board meeting moving forward. So ways to comment. Um, so like I mentioned, the Speak Up Austin page, it is open. The URL is on the screen. Again, I, I really can't stress enough um, 
staff wanted to have this meeting to speak with you all and to inform you all. Um, but again, the Speak of Austin page is a really great resource for giving us your feedback and questions as well. If you have more specific questions, if there was a particular um, uh, property, um, if you have more in detailed questions and you would like to speak to staff one-on-one, -on -one, you can also email us at hpd at austintexas.gov. And from there, we'll make sure that we get um, answers for the questions that you might have. So we are at 6.55. Um, again, I just want to pause and just hold space. If there are some questions that may have popped up, we have the Speak of Austin page, we have the email, but again, um, if anyone does have any questions, uh, let's wait a few moments to see if we get some in the Q&A box. Uh, while we're waiting, I just wanted to say to our speakers, did you have any last um, words for our audience as we wait to see if we get additional questions? Yes, I do. Also, my contact information was included in the mailing that they received because you received two, two notices. You received the invitation to this meeting as well as notice of filing and planning commission hearing notice. So on the, on the notice of filing and planning commission hearing notice, my contact information is there if they want to contact me directly for more detailed, specific questions. I'd be glad to speak with you. And Alicia, this is Mandy DeMeo. I don't have any specific comments other than to thank everybody um, who showed up and provided some really thoughtful comments and questions in the chat and the Q&A. Um, this is very helpful. And it also, um, as Alicia mentioned, all of this will be incorporated into the materials that are given to the Planning Commission and, of course, City Council as they move forward with consideration of these changes to the Urban Renewal Plan and the NCCDs. So we really appreciate everyone's time. Um, and for our chair, um, did you have any last words? No, oh, similar to Mandy, just to thank everyone for participating in this process. We really appreciate the additional input and we will take it back for further consideration as well. So thank you again, everyone. Also, all uh, emails or anything else would be added to the council backup and planning commission backup. So anything correspondence that we receive will be included. Uh, so feel free to email if you would like to have your comments included uh, in the backup materials. Thank you, Mark. Um, so, oh, I think I see you. Oh, thank you, Dr. <laughs> um, so it is 6.58. Um, we'll hang back for a minute. Um, we want to give people their evening back. We have kids, school, work, food. Um, so people, um, you're welcome to drop off. We're going to stay just for a few more minutes, um, probably about until seven. Um, for speakers, if you need to go as well, that's fine. For those of us who can hang back, again, we'll wait for about two minutes um, in case questions do come in. Thank you again, everyone, so much. Um, and then, like I mentioned, you know, give staff some time, and then we will be um, transcribing your questions and uploading those and this video onto the Speak of Austin page. So again, we'll hang out um, for about, about another minute just in case. And the Speak of Austin page should be up through at least the City Council public hearing. So there's plenty of plenty of time. Don't you, you're, there's not there's not a hurry to go and provide questions there. Okay, um, so it's seven o'clock. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and end the meeting. And uh, like I mentioned, the Speak of Austin page is open. Um, our email is on the screen. Again, that's hpd at austintexas.gov. 
Um, again, Mark mentioned that if you got a meeting notice, um, his email is available as well. So thank you again so much, um, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate you taking time out of your evening to hang out with us.